Alright, so I just wanted to say before I share this scripture that I, I know there's only a few of us and, and sometimes I may get a little fired up and sound like I'm preaching to or you know talking to a lot of people then so but I don't mean anything by it. I'm not trying to like hammer on you guys, it's just that I, I just feel sometimes inspired to to speak certain things and Anyway, so this scripture here uh, came to me this week that I wanted to share with you this morning from Jeremiah chapter 29. A very familiar verse here. A lot of people quote this verse. A lot of people who aren't even Christians quote this verse and, and uh, you know, feel like that, that, that God is talking to them. But So we'll take a look at it here in, in Jeremiah 29, verse, start with verse 10. Of Jeremiah 29 and this was God speaking here through Jeremiah he said for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call unto, upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your hearts. So, the when he uses this uh, thoughts, the word thoughts here, he, God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. So when I look this up in the original Hebrew, and because, well, you'll oftentimes see this verse quoted and changed to plans. When, when God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Well, that's because in the original text, the Hebrew word did mean that was one of the meanings of the word was planned. And so when you look at the context here that God is using it, then that is what God meant. God, in other words, God was telling the children of Israel, I have plans for you. Now, now they were in captivity, carried away to Babylon because of their own sin and disobedience. And God had tried and tried and tried to get their attention. He had sent prophet after prophet. Uh, certain kings were good, some were bad, but, but the good kings tried to get their attention, the prophets tried to get their attention, and they just kept rebelling against God and rebelling against God and worshiping idols until finally God just had enough and he just let them be carried away captive into Babylon. And he said, you're going to stay there until the land enjoys her Sabbaths because every seventh year, was supposed to be a Sabbath to the Lord where they didn't till the land and they didn't plant and they didn't harvest and they didn't sow and they hadn't been doing that. And God said, you're going to stay in Babylon until the Sabbaths are accomplished. And so 70 years they were going to be in Babylon. But the good news, the good news is God said, I still have plans for you. I still have plans for you. I'm not forgetting about you. I have plans. And why did God have plans? Because many years before this, God had appeared to a man named Abram. And he actually changed his name, of course, to Abraham. But he told him, he said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And he said, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. And you're going to become a father of many nations. And your seed is going to be so many. He, he told him to look through the heavens, count the stars. He said, that's the way your seed's going to be. He said, your seed's going to be like the sand on the seashore. And God gave him a promise. That was his seed. Well, how's that promise working out today? Well, it's still going on, isn't it? There's a whole country over there in the Middle East because of God giving Abraham a promise. He said, this land is going to be theirs forever. And they're over there now, the country of Israel, Abraham's seed. You see him in the news often, probably every day almost. That's Abraham's seed. That's God keeping his promise. 
And, right, and, and here, even though they were carried away captive, God says, I still have plans for you. Yeah, you're going to suffer. You're going to stay in Babylon because you deserve it. You earned it by disobedience. But I'm not going to throw you away. I have plans for you. And I, you know, it got me thinking about us, about how God has plans for all of us. And we cannot uh, do away, no matter what we may do or say, we can't change God's plans. I was thinking about Jonah. Jonah tried to change God's plan. God told Jonah, Jonah, you go to Nineveh and you preach. Jonah said, Son, no, I don't want to do that. So he, 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 he says that Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Well, Jonah apparently had not read Psalms 139 lately. Because if he would, he could have read in there where the psalmist said, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? He said, If I ascend up into heaven, you're there. If I, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. He said, if I take the wings of the morning and I flee to the uttermost part of the earth, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. So Jonah thought he could flee from the presence of God. Well, he ended up in the fish's belly. He ended up in the belly of hell. But what he found out was that in the belly of hell, God was there. He couldn't flee from the presence. And Jonah said, that was just from Jonah's own lips when he began to pray. He said, out of the belly of hell cried I. That was when he was down in the well. He said, out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest me. He found out that you can't run from the presence of God, that when God has plans for your life, he's going to bring it to pass. No matter what you do, God will bring them to pass. Somebody was telling me yesterday, somebody was giving me trouble yesterday. And uh, about the chapel, and basically, you know, you think you're this, and you think you're a pastor, whatever. I said, No, I'm not a pastor. I'm nobody. Well, what are you? I'm nobody, and this is what I tell them. I said, I'm a piece of trash. I'm a piece of trash. That God took off the trash pile. I had thrown away by people. Looked like finished. Looked like it was over and done. It looked like God's plan. That God's plan was over. And so that's what I said. I said, I'm just a piece of trash that God took off the pile. And he wasn't through. You see, no matter what happened in my life, I couldn't mess up God's plan. Because God's plan is bigger than us. I've seen this little thing before. You probably have too. That says, if you think you messed up God's plan for your life, I've got news for you, my friend. You're not that powerful. (laughs) You're not that powerful. Because when God has plans for you, He knows how to bring them to pass. He knows how to work with you. He knows how to help. And even though you may mess up, even though you may go a wrong direction, perhaps, like Jonah did, God knows how to get you back on track. God knows how to bring his plans to pass. And so what I wanted to encourage all of us today is that God does have plans for every one of us. God's got plans for your life. And nothing's going to change those plans because he's going to bring them to pass. He's going to bring them to pass. I don't know what God's plans are for your life, but I know he's got some plans for you. Uh, I, it's like I was telling you earlier about my about mom, and I when I told her I said I don't know what God's doing in that chapel, but I said I know He's doing something. 
And I believe that God has this, has this nucleus here of faithful people, and he has plans. We don't know what those plans are right now, because we don't know the future. We don't know what God's plans are. We don't know what he's going to do. But we know that he's got plans, and he's going to bring them to pass in every one of our lives as we surrender to him. We must, and that's key, of course, we must surrender to him. We must yield to him. But I'm going back to Jonah for a minute. When Jonah got down in that belly of that well, and it took him three days. He was one stubborn man. It took him three days before he began to pray. But you know, after three days, he finally got enough. And he began to pray, and he says, I will pay my vows. <laughs> and God spoke to that fish, and it spit him out on dry land. And what did he do? God says the word of the Lord came to Jonah again the second time. Aren't you glad that God gives us a second chance? Aren't you glad that God didn't just let Jonah drown out there in the ocean and say, Okay, you stubborn, you wanted your way, you got your way. Drown. But God went to a lot of trouble. Think about this. God went to a lot of trouble to spare Jonah's life and to spare the people of Nineveh. He caused a great storm to come. He prepared it. He prepared a fish to swallow up Jonah. He spoke to the fish and it spit Jonah out. And then he spoke to Jonah again and he said, go preach. And after Jonah did preach, then God prepared a gourd to come up over Jonah's head. He prepared a vehement east wind, first of all, to, make, to get him hot. And God just did all kinds of stuff to get one man's attention and that he might help spare a nation and spare a city. Think about that. God will go to no limit. For his plan to be fulfilled. God will go to no limits. For his plan to be fulfilled. In your life and in my life. So today that was a word of encouragement. That God spoke to me. I wanted to pass on. And that is that God has plans for you. God has plans for you. You may not even know what they are right now. I know. I know how that is. Been there. Done that. Still don't really know. But I know that God has plans. And I know he has plans for you. And, and we're, we're, we're seeing. We are seeing God put process in place. Put the process in place. We're seeing God work. We're seeing God move. We're seeing God work in little ways. Where he's saying, I haven't forgot about you. I'm, I'm thinking about you. You're, 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 I see you. You're in my mind. You're in my heart. You're constantly there. I've got plans for you. I've got great things in store. And so that's what the word I want to leave with us today. Let us be encouraged that God has plans for every one of us. And I want to tell you, there is nobody, there is no power in heaven, on earth, or in hell that can change God's plans for you. They will come to pass because God promised. So today we're going to have a time of prayer. And uh, we pray that you, I pray that you will be encouraged today and strengthened. And just like I said, every, okay, every day, you're not going to always understand. I, every day, some days are just going to be like normal days. It's not going to seem like anything special. It's not going to seem like anything out of the ordinary. It's just going to seem normal. Your normal day. But I want to tell you, on those days, God is working in your heart and in your life to bring His plans to pass. You don't even know it. But He is. In little ways. In little subtle things. He is working. On the, on the mundane days. On the, on the average days. On the days when it seems like you're going backwards. God's plan is being fulfilled in your life. So let's take courage today. Let's take heart. Let's be encouraged at what God is doing and what he's going to do. So we're going to have a time.